that cloning is against God's will, or it's too much of a change for us to adapt to, is once again a variation of the idea that perceived future change is the worst, and imagined future work is the hardest to do. We forget that we're already living with a certain rate of change, that aging and death already take a lot of energy to deal with, and that the adopted rate of change would actually be slower than what we're familiar with already. If you take no action to stop change, you will change, and change for the worse, and eventually your body will break down and you'll die. So staying the same does require, paradoxically, a certain amount of change. If we were to use clone cells to keep people from aging and keep their appearance the same, that would actually be more conservative in many ways than our current reality. The only problem is that it takes effort. It takes technological work and political will to put the possibility of staying the same into effect. The biblical apples, as I see them, aren't wrong to eat because they give life and moral insight, but because they're a quick and false fix a promise of instant gratification gained by imitating an entity that sustains itself by destructive means. The idea of imitating the institutional route to immortality and knowledge, like a cannibal who eats a smart person to feel powerful and in hopes of becoming smart as well, is tempting like the biblical apple, but gaining life by killing works only for institutions, not people themselves. If one thinks of God as an institution, then God's advice not to eat the apple makes sense. It's like God said, do as I say, don't do as I do, and was imitated in the worst possible way. The reversal of the sacrificial principle, which I've employed in No Sang Graal, is an adaptation of God's advice to be fruitful and multiply. In other words, seek knowledge and life by productive rather than consumptive means.